All right, Facebook, let me check in with y'all, see if y'all dropped any questions. Um, let's see, how would you handle, okay, hold on, come back to that one. Okay, let's see, somebody asked, how can I, nope, same question, I'm coming back for the next one. How would you handle bordering states? I live in Baltimore area. When I started, I would take some Pennsylvania jobs 40 minutes from my house. Do I have to start a Pennsylvania company or can I have a biz in Maryland and service parts of Pennsylvania? You know, that's a good question. So somebody else asked me about that too. Like when you're like in that DMV area, um, I don't really know, to be honest. I think your state would probably know a lot more because like DMV, like, you know, those, those big areas like combined. So that, I would definitely recommend contacting like your local secretary of state and asking those legal questions. Cause like off top in my mind, I'm assuming that you would not necessarily have to like, see, yeah, this is where like, I'm, I'm like, can, you know, jumbled up because of, I feel like two things. I feel like, yes, you would have to get something to operate business in that state and then you also have to get something in your home state, letting them know that you're operating business in another state. But like I said, that's like totally not professional advice. So I would definitely contact your local secretary of state and have them uh, be able to like really, really advise you. Okay, let's see, question in the chat. I know somebody else who also wants to start their cleaning business. I also want to rejoin, but the price has gone up. I'm ready to scale. Finally hit. Hey, look. Hey, Kimmy. I didn't. Even, I didn't even see that with your name. Okay. Oh, the direct message. Yes. I mean, you know, definitely um, reach out. You know, we having a lot of different challenges. I'm gonna be doing. I I really like the last challenge that I did. I think I'm gonna do another one. I don't know how soon. Um, but you guys know, like, it is totally capable of scaling um, this business to 10K. We, we had somebody share during the challenge her journey. Um, and it wasn't easy and it was bumpy and rocky, but she definitely did do it. Um, but yeah, so let me see. I thought I saw another one. Okay, I'll come back to that one as well. Does subcontracting make sense if you have no company capital to pay for cleaners right away? Oh, I think I've seen this question pop up in the group too a couple of days ago. Does subcontracting make sense if you have no company capital to pay cleaners right away? Meaning, can you pay some contractors at net for 30 days? When you, now, is this, is this for like commercial or this residential? Because the one thing is why I was able to start this business with having no money um, is this exact same concept um, because I know that I can charge the client, right? I can send my cleaner out. The, the, the client is going to pay for the service. And by the time that money clears, it's going to be time for me to pay the client. And it's not necessarily on a 30-day net. Um, I like to have the payroll schedule where it is, um, what is it? It's a week behind. I don't want to see, I don't want to say the first week is hell because I said that and somebody misinterpreted what that meant. Like the first week is hell, but they still are paid every Friday. They're paid every Friday. Um, but it's like when they're paid, they're paid for the work that they did the previous week. You know what I'm saying? So like, for instance, um, you know, my business partner did payroll literally this morning, right? Um, for our companies, for uh, the VA companies. And today's the 24th. So they're going to get it on the 28th, but it's for jobs that they did on the last week. You see what I'm saying? And then, so they'll get that this Friday. And then when they get paid on next Friday on the 4th, it'll be for jobs that they did the previous week. And I, I'll post that pay schedule in circle as well, you guys, so you can see it. Cause even I, I get tripped up on about it, which is like, you know, remember I talked about y'all where she's good at, I'm not at. <laughs> I have such a hardest time running payroll, but she is like, like with it. So I'm gonna post that schedule. So you don't necessarily have to have capital to be able to work with cleaners at 1099 contractors, right? You don't, you don't need that because you're going to collect the money from the client up front, which is why I love residential. Because if you are talking about commercial, you may have to have a little capital or you need to make sure that they're okay with waiting because 
sometimes how commercial companies will pay is on a 30 day net, 45 day net, 90 day net, like depending on whatever kind of, you know, whatever way they roll, there is a delay. And then sometimes your cleaners may not be with that. Now, if you're partnering with an actual commercial, a small commercial company, they are more aware of commercial pay and they may be more upfront, may, may, may be more understanding with that, with that wait period. But for those that are interested in residential, you do not need capital up front. You just need to find a client that's willing to pay. And then once that payment clears, okay, then you'll have the funds to be able to pay the cleaner. And that's, that is the rotation in how you're paying the cleaners. Okay, got it. I'm definitely going to look into that. You're welcome. Let me know if that made if that made sense for you, Adrian. Let, let me know if that made sense. Um, let me know if that made sense because I think I I know I saw your question pop up in the Facebook group a couple of days ago or a week ago, and I meant to respond to it, but there's so many people already responding to it. Um, sometimes when I see a lot of a lot of responses on Facebook group comments and like they're kind of contrary to what I may believe to say. <laughs> I tend not to respond because I want to avoid confrontation because everybody is is definitely or you know can have their own opinion. But um, so yeah, but you do not necessarily need to have capital. I do commercial. Okay, so yeah, exactly. Now with that commercial sense, I'm I'm gonna bow down, bow out because I do not fully know how the commercial and all of that necessarily works, I would definitely recommend that you join um, Kendall's group called Clean Money. And he is our commercial partner trainer where he comes and teaches us on all things commercial cleaning. But um, but so like, yeah, so that part I would not know. Now you can definitely talk to him. But I, I still feel like if you hire a commercial company like to work as your 1099 as contractors, and they are used to that 30 day net, then, you know, technically you can do that too. And then also, or, you know, depending on what your business credit looks like or your personal credit look like, or if you want to be able to leverage that contract and get access to funding per the contract that you were able to solidify, then you can get funding that way as well. So, but he would definitely be able to help you. Hey, Kimmy, I see your hand raised love. Yeah. Hi, Jasmine. Hey, how are you? Good, good. It's been good. a minute. I know. I was like, well, I didn't even know that was you. <laughs> oh, just a lot of stuff has been happening. Um, so this oh. is going to be an update slash question. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you remember a while back, we did a contract. Um, we bid in for a contract um, for assisted living. Uh -huh. um, since then I've done two assisted livings. And now I also have um, another one that we go to every week. Nice. Um, there's one more in the works. Um, I finally hit 10K. That is so it's awesome. Seen as I I'm started, so like, excited. Four months ago. So, but, but no, um, that is look. Your timing is your timing. That is so awesome. I'm excited for you. Yeah. Um. I guess my question now would be, um, I I'm ready to move up. Um. Mm -hmm. And I'm also you know, sick and tired of Google leads and Thumbtack and just the clients that always call and always seem to be lowballing. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing my next, my, my question will be how, how do I move away from this pay per lead um, services? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm also, I'm not also able to do the guerrilla marketing, you know, knocking on doors and all yeah. of that stuff because I'm a graduate student doing this yeah. on a side in school, I really don't yeah. have that much <laughs> yeah. physical time um, to go around the neighborhood and find clients. Um, and I've also heard you talk about SEO, but every single person I've spoken to regarding SEO seemed to want us to pay like $2,000, $3,000 a month. Yep. Um, and <laughs> it's a lot, but I'm, I'm ready to move forward and, you know, get my, my workers, um, five plus more jobs a day because so, they're know, looking for more work. So nothing. So, okay. Are you doing Google ads too, or just Google local? 
I'm doing local ads. Um, Google ads burned me um, because okay. the paper click ads. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, I once spent like $500 in like less than three, no. Yeah, $500 in less than a week mm -hmm. um, and got nothing off of it. Um, and I know it's probably because I wasn't familiar with yeah. how to develop that pay-per-click system. Um, I've not been able to use it to my advantage. Um, I may recommend that you reach out to Ginger. She's the one that did our, our Google training. If you look in the academy, you'll be able to see um, you'll be able to see her Google ad training, and she has a company. She's here locally here in Dallas um, as well, and she has like a marketing company where she offers um, SEO and like Google ads, more specific like Google ads marketing. Because like the thing about it is, I'm not sure if you will. I'm not. I don't want to have, I don't want to say this, but I'm not sure if you'll ever get to a place to where you won't be paying for leads in some kind of way, because my SEO was 2,500 a month, and then it went up to 2,700 a month. And then I, I added like Google map pack. And that was like an additional five to $800 a month. Um, so I don't know if, I don't know if you'll ever get to a place to where you're not in some form or fashion, paying for paying for leads. Now there are more. There are other options to like get leads, like Google Ads, right? Google local ads, like those, like Google Google Ads and Google local. Those are really, really, really good places to grow your business and to get more leads. And how you grow your business is to be able to ex, um, expand your budget, right? And then as more income comes, you can start building up SEO, right? And there's a SEO, um, there is an SEO in the academy to where you can kind of learn some basicness of it, of it and how to implement and, you know, put some things in place. But you may always have to pay for leads until like you get SEO and you're, you know, you're thriving on page one and you're good. But even though, even I've seen companies like they're still on organically on the top page and you'll still see them with Google Guarantee, and you'll still see them on spot Google Sponsored. Okay, mm -hmm. I think yeah, I think I'll look I'll look into the um, academy and try to get that. Yeah. Um, what's your advice on like lowballing customers? Like I mm -hmm. I know for a fact that if I were to and and that's the kind of customers I'm getting from Google. Um, I know that I'm not the most I'm not the cheapest. Yeah. Um, um, cleaning service in my area, but I'm also not the most expensive. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the customers that we get, and it's so frustrating because I keep paying for these clients who want a the price that is sometimes even below what a solo um, uninsured cleaner is going to take. Um, mm -hmm. And people who are just price shopping, I feel like yeah. it's it's insane that I, is there, is there something, a tactic I could use um, just so that I'm not losing any money. Like at least if the lead comes in, I would right. like to close it no matter how little profit I get. What, um, what, what area are you in again? I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So how would you, so the, the area that you're servicing, how would you say demographically, demographically that area is? Um, so the area that I'm targeting, um, Ironically, there are places with million dollar homes and I'm finding that the clients who typically pay the most are not usually the wealthiest clients. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, the wealthiest clients are sometimes right. even the cheapest clients, they are. which That's is why I, rich. right? <laughs> yeah, which is why I even set up my business here in the first place, because I researched the demographics, um, every, all, with the average income for mm -hmm. the area that I'm targeting uh, is over 70,000 plus. Um, and you said, so I, I, I'm sorry, you said 70, no plus, like it's more than, it's more than 70,000, like the size of homes, the, um, it's a, it's a community for doctors and lawyers basically. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm, I'm surprised most times when, you know, somebody calls me and I know they're a surgeon, um, because they'll tell me that they're a surgeon yeah. and they want to pay like 150,000, $150 for a yeah. 
my thousand square foot home. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, the thing about it is like, I guess I never even, I don't think I've said this, or I have, I don't think I've said it again. You know, one thing is like when I, even when, as I'm like searching for like the right demographic and, and like all of those things that I, I'm normally searching for, I try not to search for like, I, I try to find like that middle spot. Like I want that, that perfect sweet spot of suburban not to where like they're wealthy wealthy because they do have that mindset to where they want the the right price and they are very much used to negotiating the price to their liking and they're also very much willing to um to say no um what's what i was looking for that's not the exact word i was looking for um and, or they're and they're used to getting their way right um so I guess my only thing I could say, like for you to fine tune, but see, you're you're doing well in that area. So I, the only thing I can think of is fine tuning the area more in a market to where like you feel like they're not going to want to lowball. Like, like that's literally the only thing. Because or the or or the other thing is that you lower your prices. But if you feel like your prices are set right on market point to where you're not even the highest you're kind of, and you're not the lowest, you're like right there in the middle. Um, you know what I mean? Like then it's, 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 you, we know it's not your prices. Yeah. I'm just really, I've thought about the lowering of my prices. Um, and I'm just really worried because my, my, my cleaners are used to making a certain amount. Right. And you don't want to uh, do that because they're going to be like, yeah. where, 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 where does this decrease come from? Yeah, 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 they're 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 used to making a certain amount, and I know. What would that... you say your percentage is? You know, sometimes, like I was sharing, like I share is that like, even as has as well as I did on Thumbtack for those first two years, um, not all of the leads actually closed. Right, I still had a lot of no's. Um, so, do you feel like it could be a scenario to where? you have an overall good balance and it's just like the no's are just the most frustrating pain points to where it's overshadowing like how good you, your business is doing i wish that was the case um i did an analysis last week and i have a 30 a barely 30 percent close rate so like for every 10 10 leads that i get yeah like Sometimes maybe three would close because um, I have a VA that I work with and I actually had them keep track of all the calls that came in and which one mm -hmm. they were able to close. Um, and since I reduced my budget on Tumtac, closing rate has been zero <laughs> because, yeah, I try to, not to put in as much money in Tumtac because it's just it keeps siphoning money and doesn't give much back in return. And then what about your Google Local? Yeah, that's what it is. Google local ads. Um, oh, local okay, so it's Google local, and then but you lower the budget on Thumbtack. On Thumbtack, so, so yeah. What was was Thumbtack? Were you getting the same response as from Thumbtack as well? Yeah, Thumbtack was like a twenty percent um, close rate um, per week, um, and it was really it was really frustrating. So I decided to take a chunk of that money and just put it into Google LSA. Okay. And so are you seeing a good return on that now? It's that much you... better. It's much better on Google because at least like the customers are on the phone and the VA can answer um, and we can close the lead. Um, if the customer is ready to ready for the cleaning service, it's almost a guaranteed close because, you know, the VA is very aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. But the price shoppers, I don't know how to get around them. Yeah. Um, we've had to duck our prices a few times. Um, just to make sure that, you know, at least we get some income for the day. Uh, but I'm just really worried that if we keep doing that, then, you know, we're going to be stuck at. Now, I just, I, just, I just did a quick search, right? Because I wanted to figure out like, what is an actual good close rate percentage? And what popped up was, um, let's see, I'm gonna look at that one too, but let me read this one first. It says high performing sales organizations are said to close 30% of sales from qualified leads while sell, while the average company sells 20%, right? So oh, wow. with both of those percentages being said from a high performing to, of 30 and an average one at 20, and if they're considering that as a good sales rate, I think 
because like when I heard your percentage, the general rule of thumb is that that sales closing ratio of 20% is considered average, while 30% close ratio close ratio is considered high. So I think that this can give you some good perspective as in to like allowing you to know that what you are doing is good, even though we desire to close all of them. So now the theme should be, okay, let's, let's find out how we could sell value, how we could maybe um, uh, let them know the value that we offer and, uh, and selling our value, and then making sure that we have a good follow-up funnel system for the ones that are saying no, so we can still try to nurture those leads. So whenever they think about us or the ones they went with cheaper and they were the quality was not there, they'll know that we're here for them. Okay. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. We try to do that sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just not letting myself get too frustrated um, yeah. Don't by get the fact frustrated. that- what you're doing is really well. I would say check check with, um, there's a new email funnel course that I put in there as well. Um, a, a really good um, a really good email platform. I like Active Campaign. Personally, I like Active Campaign a lot. Like you could create different follow-up funnels, right? And you can categorize them for like one where like leads are not closing at all. One where like you gave them a quote and they didn't follow up. One for like one timers, one for cancellations. And then like you can nurture these leads with emails so, um, and then also text as well. You can get Twilio through um booking koala i'm not sure if you're using booking koala booking koala has twilio and you can also set up a, a text campaign i signed up for this this cleaning company's text campaign i i swear you not they text me like every other day <laughs> i feel like they are on it <laughs> and i did it just because i wanted to see what their funneling system like what were they what was their verbiage like what was their copy what were they actually sending and they consistently send a text message every other day like consistently. And you say it's called Active Campaign? Active Campaign, yeah. Okay, I'll look into that. Thank you so much, Asa. You're welcome, you're welcome. That was some good questions. I hope you guys got some out of that too. If you guys have any follow-up questions from that, please let me know. What was that called again? Go yeah, Google LSA is Google Local Leads. Um, Google LSA is like what they, it's like their new terms. So I don't, I guess local service ads. Yeah. So Google LSA is Google local service ads. Um, and like you, you guys, that's the account that a lot of people have been having some trouble with setting it up. Um, so you want to set up, like you go to your Google, my business and you set that up and then you'll be able to get access to um, add Google LSA. And then where you need to have like that verified account. Uh, let's see. I will say I lowered my thumbtack prices per job by $20. I got way more jobs after about six months. I went back and raised them and kept getting work. Awesome. Nice. You know, I, I know a lot of people are always scary about lowering and raising their prices. You know, the thing about it is like, you know, we have to sometimes we'll do some testing, some A-B testing to see like what will actually work best, what attracts our client best, what wording, what verbiage, like, you know, upsell, downsell, like how, how can I best convey the value to my clients to close them? Um, and it's going to take, it's going to take testing because that's the only way we're really, really going to know. Does Gusto have an option to pay contractors earlier than four days? There are many times when I have have to front the capital um, for payroll because funds haven't hit yet. So that is the reason why, though, I do the every other. Because, for example, um, and then, of course, no, let me see. Hold on. For example, let's say we do those. You process it. Friday. Okay. So... Shoot, I can kind of remember what the what was the cutoff days. I think the cutoff days is from it stops on Friday. Friday. So from sat from Saturday to Friday. Shoot, let me not get the line, y'all. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the, the the post and I'm gonna post it on there because that this is the reason why I have that post. So that way the cleanings that were done will be cleared and in the account. 
um, by Monday. Um, there are other accounts though to where you don't have to wait that 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 time frame, but that platform of you know that that package of course costs a little bit more. So you can just take a look into them. They just cost a little bit more. So that I do the same thing, Jasmine, but it still doesn't work out that way. Really? Yeah, I don't know. What how how do you have your setting on Stripe to send you money? Do you have it to send daily or like on an actual yes. on a daily? Yes. But even with Stripe, you know, that still takes a few days. Um, I say maybe two days for me, I think. So like if you if you get if you collect the money on a Friday. Yeah, and that's that's the account. issue. Exactly. That's the issue. Mainly Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, the Saturday and Sunday will be on the following week, but if you get paid on the Friday, would it not be in your account by Monday? No. Sometimes yeah. if it is, it's not until it's after that, that four time. o'clock, you know how you have to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So that's the issue. That's why I'm like, I'm considering maybe going with, I don't know, QuickBooks or something. I think they do it a lot faster. It's just more money. Yeah. Well then if, if you're willing to pay them more money and you're checking for budget, mm -hmm. do check with Gusto because they do offer like a two day. Um, it's just in another, okay. just in another package. That's what I was wondering. Is it, is it probably like the employee? Uh, it's an, it's, it is the employee, but it, they still do employee and contractor. Oh, okay. So are yeah. you saying, cause I thought the payroll, like, I'm just thinking about like when we first started, you know, you were explaining this many, many months ago to us. Um, I thought that the payroll should go from, um, Sun, what is it? Sun, I believe Sunday to Sunday. I think you posted something a long time ago about it. I, I, don't, have. I don't have it. Yeah. I totally could have, and it's probably still in circle. But I, I know that because like I'm not I'm not really good at payroll and stuff. Mm -hmm. When I brought my business partner on for the for the thing, like she totally just changed it. Um and actually, like I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Okay. If this is a you you changed it recently. Is that it maybe? Well, she she like when we started running payroll, like when she started running payroll for the company, that's when she changed it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because uh -huh. I kind of have it like in my contract, you know, when they sign on, how the pay goes. So that means we would have to let everyone know that it's going to be changed. So 